Guys, you can also join us in Facebook and also in WhatsApp. So if you have any doubts regarding any topic, you can ask me over there. So the link will be given in the description box. And for clear notes on my topics, please you can check my link www.biomedhistory.com and the link will be given in the description box. Hello friends, my name is Vandra Gupta. So in this video, let us discuss about Chagas disease. So this Chagas disease is commonly called as American trypanosomiasis. And this Chagas disease is caused by a parasite known as Trypanosoma cruzi. And this Trypanosoma cruzi comes under the classification of euglenoids. Okay. And coming to the discovery. So Carlos Chagas is the scientist who first identified the structure of Trypanosoma cruzi in 1909. Coming to the affection. There is nothing but how many people were affected in appropriate countries. 8 to 10 million people were affected in Latin America region. 3 lakh to 4 lakh people were affected in Spain region. So many people such as in the countries or in the regions such as Argentina, Mexico, Central America and Africa regions. So in these regions many people were affected with this type of disease known as Chagas disease. So now let us discuss about the structure of this parasite called Trypanosoma cruzi. So now let us discuss about the structure of Trypanosoma cruzi. So here is the structure of the Trypanosoma cruzi and it comes under the classification of Euglena I have said you before. So this is a flagellar pocket and this is the kinetoplast. Here is the basal body and this is the undulating membrane and here is a flagellum. If you see here the thread like structure we have drawn which is known as flagellum. So if you see there the flagellum is attached to the body of Trypanosoma itself. So how it is attached with the help of undulating membrane here the blue color daughter like structures I have drawn if you see here this is the flagellum right and below the flagellum the blue color daughter like structures I have drawn is known as undulating membrane so with the help of that undulating membrane that flagellum will be attached to the body of the trypanosoma cruzi okay in that way the total flagellum will be attached to the body of the trypanosoma cruzi and here is the nucleus and this is the sub pellicular microtubules so now let us discuss about the life cycle of Chagas disease which is caused by the parasite of Trypanosoma cruzi. So now let us discuss about the life cycle of Chagas disease. So this life cycle of this Chagas disease will be completed within two hosts. First one is Reduvid bug. It is an insect and this Reduvid bug is commonly called as kissing bug. So coming to the secondary host, humans. So this Reduvid bug acts as the primary host and this human beings acts as the secondary host. So the life cycle begins with the bug, there is nothing but kissing bug which is an insect and the scientific name of this kissing bug is reduvid bug and the life cycle begins from this bug. So within this insect, this consists of crop right and within the crop, epimastigot, there is a presence of epimastigot within the crop and within the crop, epimastigot undergoes binary fission. So we all know that this belongs to the classification of euglena. So within the euglena longitudinal binary fission takes place and the longitudinal binary fission within euglena also I explained in the previous videos. If you want to know properly the link will be given in the description box. So people who are interested please watch that video. So coming to here. So this epimastigot which are mainly present in the crop undergoes longitudinal binary fission over here right. So when this longitudinal binary fission over takes place then it mainly forms many daughter individuals. It mainly forms many daughter individuals. So after this division takes place, it forms tripomastigotes. That is nothing but these daughter individuals are nothing but tripomastigotes. Okay? So these tripomastigotes will not divide. Will not divide. But it can enter into human cells. I have written here, right? But this can enter into human cells. So these tripomastigotes will bite on the face of humans. That is nothing but when the human is on deep sleep during night time not in the daytime during night time when the man is in deep sleep then this insect kissing bug will bite man on the head part on the head region so if you see here properly okay wait a minute so if you see here properly this is the head of the man right this is the head region of human and the red color one which I have drawn is the kissing bug. That is nothing but it is an insect which I have explained here, right? And this insect will bite on the head region of the man. So what happens? This upper diagram indicates this is the skin. And inside the skin there are nerves and fibers. So if you see here, 
This red color one is the fecals of the insect. It releases the fecals and the fecals consists of trypomastigotes. And from the fecals, the trypomastigotes will be released and will enter into the skin here. And the green color one which I have drawn here, if you see here, the green color one which I have drawn here indicates the trypomastigotes which enter into the skin. Okay? So, and from the head, this mastigot which are present in the head undergoes binary fusion. Which binary fusion? Longitudinal binary fusion. As this comes under the classification of euglenoids, right? As the euglenoid undergoes longitudinal binary fusion, so this parasite will undergo longitudinal binary fusion itself. And the daughter individuals which are mainly formed after this division, that is nothing but after this binary fusion, will enter into the blood of the man. So the red color one which I have drawn here are the RBC cells and the green color one which I have drawn here are the trypomastigotes. So the trypomastigotes which are mainly present in the blood are called as blood trypomastigotes. So I have written here blood trypomastigotes. So this blood trypomastigotes which are mainly present in the blood of the man will enter into many cells and other tissues also. And as it enters into other tissues, I have written here, see, it enters into the human cells. Which one this trypomastigote will enter into the human cells? So, as this enters into the human cells, again the total cycle will be repeated over here. There is nothing but this trypomastigot will bite, will bite which I, this trypomastigot which are mainly present in this kissing bug will bite the skin of the man that is, that is nothing but at the part or the region of the head. And again that fecus matter which consists of this trypomastigots will enter into the blood of the man and again the flagella will be lost. Due to the loss of the flagella, it transforms into a mastigot and this a mastigot will again undergoes longitudinal binary fusion. Due to that longitudinal binary fusion, the daughter individual's formation takes place. So the daughter individuals will again enter into the blood cells of the man. So as it enters into the blood cells of the man, it is known as blood trypomastigotes. And that blood trypomastigotes will again enter into the next stage. That is nothing but it again enters the human cells and again the total life cycle begins. So this is about the life cycle of Chagas disease. So now let us discuss about the symptoms of Chagas disease who is affected with the person. So now let us discuss about the symptoms of Chagas disease. First one is fatigue, second one is fever, third one is rashes and the rashes can be you can see in the forehead region okay. As this parasite will bite at, the, our head, at our face region only right. So much symptoms can be seen our face part only. So coming to the fourth one swollen eyelids, eyelids will be swollen okay. And fifth one is cardiac arrest, sixth one is heart failure, seventh one is altered heartbeat that is nothing but uh, there will be change in our heartbeat and eighth one is blood clot enlargement of spleen and liver and body pains so there is slightly if you see here this is a ca cardiac arrest fifth symptom is cardiac arrest and eighth symptom is blood clot so by this you can understand that when the blood gets clotting then heart doesn't catch the blood doesn't pump the blood because as the blood how much the blood is thick it doesn't catch the blood so it leads to cardiac arrest and heart failure also which I have explained in the 5th symptom and 6th symptom also. So due to that blood clot there will be no pumping of blood takes place by the heart. So due to that no pumping of blood so there is a result in 6th and 5th symptoms that is nothing but cardiac arrest and heart failure. So now let us discuss about the diagnosis and treatment for the person who is infected with this type of disease known as Chagas disease. So now let us discuss about the diagnosis for the person who is infected by this type of disease known as Chagas disease. And first one, when you consult a doctor, first he do microscopic examination. That is nothing but he will first check your blood. He will take the blood sample from your body and he will check it under the microscope. And he will examine that whether there is a presence of this parasite or not. And coming to the second one, ECG test, electrocardiogram, which uh, it about the heart. He will check the whether the heartbeat is correct or not and acute phase, chronic phase, congenital phase. This, this all of these phases are nothing but this diagnosis depends upon this phase. Acute phase is nothing but whether it is a short period or chronic phase is nothing but whether it is a long period or uh, congenital phase. Congenital phase. Uh, congenital phase is nothing but whether this disease is caused before birth or after birth. So blood test. I have said you in the microscopic examination itself. So firstly they will extract a little amount of blood from your body and they will examine whether the there is a presence of parasites or not under the presence of the microscope that is nothing but microscopic examination and coming to the treatment so these are the drugs benzenidazole and nifamitox are the 
drugs which are mainly given for the person who is infected by this type of disease known as Chagas disease and one more important thing which you have to remember is pregnant women should not consume this both benzinidazole and nifomatox because if she consume that then the infant which was growing in her womb will die okay so this infected infants can consume that is nothing but newborn babies normally this disease can be seen only in the newborn babies and that newborn babies can be uh, can take this tube too okay thank you for watching this video guys if you like this video please do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box so i'll clarify your doubts immediately thank you